All right. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We are up against the Prince of Darkness. Jesus's purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace within you. You're in a twin system, light and dark, good and evil, up and down. If your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. You got to get turned up. That's the mystery of everything to understanding the Bible, what I just showed you. To understand that you have one eye up, one eye down, and when you get that eye that's down inverted and, you know, representing that energy that's been held captive, that side of you that's been held captive by the angel of the bottomless pit because it's pointed down. Once you get converted, your eye will be turned up. Your eyes will become single. Your whole body will be full of light, not light and dark. Light is up, dark is down. So when you get converted, your eye get other eye gets turned up. You have two eyes that are up. Your whole body is full of light because it's not light and dark. It's light and light. And you've been converted. That's why Jesus says, unless you're converted, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's why he said, unless you're born again, you get converted, you get turned up. The Lord's let me prove it over and over. That's the biggest most mind-boggling, most simplistic reality of the Bible. And it was even made manifest on the cross when Jesus was crucified. Let me show you. Here is, a, here is an example of it. Here's a six and a nine showing one's right, one's up. You invert a six, it becomes a nine. And in the Bible, Matthew 25, 27, 45, there was darkness over the, all the land now from the sixth hour. I put six in black right here, six. There was darkness from the sixth hour. There was darkness all over all, over all the land unto the ninth hour. There's the nine. Six and nine, it's the representation of the twin system. And that's why Peter was crucified upside down because he was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, knowing that that's what being on the rock was. And that's why the Lord God took me all the way to the desert and put me in a little Garden of Eden setting and walked me down a riverbed in the desert and had me stop and pick up two rocks and told me to put them together and they became the same rock. You're looking at it. You cannot make this up. It's documented. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to prove to you the end of the world is here. It is impossible for me to show you what I'm about to show you. You're going to know in your heart there's no way because the way the Lord does things, he's so far out in front that he already knew what he was going to give me to show you when I was in Grand Junction. Y'all ready? His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Okay, let me check on my settings. Here's what we're going to do first. Ready? I'm going to show you the meaning of a name. Ready? Let's look at the name Ricardo. Ricardo, Portuguese and Spanish variation of Richard, dominant ruler. The name Ricardo is a boy's name from of Spanish Portuguese or, origin, meaning dominant ruler. You can go look at, you know, go go click on a bunch of windows on Ricardo. Ricardo is the Spanish and Portuguese conjugate of the name Richard. It is derived from Proto-Germanic Rix King Ruler Hardus Hard King or Hard Ruler. So you you know if you want to go look it up yourself, go look it up. Richard means dominant ruler or hard king or hard ruler. Again, Ricardo means hard king or hard ruler, dominant ruler. Okay. I wanted you to know that before I play you. Now, you want to see the way the Lord works, how the Lord's out in front? Y'all remember the video I did and I showed you my trip from Grand Junction, the three-hour video, after I loaded those shipping containers, you remember, and I got stuck on Highway 50. There, there, was, a, there was a police stopping all, all the traffic saying, look, we're only letting a few cars through. And I told him I was going to San Antonio and that truck that was behind me with the shipping containers was also going to San Antonio. So because he let me go through my vehicles is a search and rescue vehicle. So he let me go through 
He also let the, the truck go through the, with the shipping containers. And we were waiting in line to go through that area in Gunnison, Colorado uh, to, to head back to San Antonio. Okay, now, y'all remember that? I'll remind you in just a minute. I'll prove it. Now, what does the name Ricardo mean? Hard, hard king, harsh, harsh king, hard king, hard ruler, dominant ruler. That's the meaning of Ricardo. We're going to listen to, we're going to listen to Daniel 243. I'm going to put right here, Daniel. I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to listen to all of Daniel 2. Uh, for those of you that haven't read your Bible, you don't know what Daniel 2, 2 is all about. It's about Nebuchadnezzar's dream of this statue that grew and it filled the whole earth and he was very disturbed by his dream. And Daniel, who had been carried away captive to Babylon, he interpreted the dream for Nebuchadnezzar. And it speaks about the rock that was hewn from the quarry without hands will crush all these other kingdoms. And I want you to listen to Max McLean so you have it fresh on your mind before I continue any further. All right, let's listen. Here we go. Okay, I'll enlarge this for you and I'll, I'll try and just kind of highlight very, very lightly as we go down. Uh, I think you should maybe, you know, get your own Bible open and maybe scroll along with it if you like. Okay, here we go. Daniel 2. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep brake from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, Ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asked such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows 
should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Bless be the name of God for ever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah, that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed, are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed what should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image, this great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, in another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, forasmuch as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for ever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Okay, so now... I want to show you the way the Lord, I'm going to show you the methodology, the way the Lord God, the Lord God has communicated to me that the end of the world is here. Now, y'all remember, and I'm going to give you a brief reminder one more time. What's the name Ricardo mean? Ricardo means dominant ruler or it means hard king or hard ruler. Okay. Daniel 2 it says, in the end, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom shall, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But the rock that was hewn from the quarry without hands, right here, the stone that was cut from the mountain without hands, it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Remember, the stone that was cut from the mountain without hands and it break the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation of sure is sure. I'm going to look at you right now in the eyes. It has been made known to me what shall come to pass very quickly. And I'm going to show you how. I want to show you the way the Lord proved it. Y'all ready? Now. Y'all remember the Lord took me to the desert, to Chinati, and told me I would be skydiving into the desert. I had no idea what the purpose was. He just told me, trust me, just go out there and do what I say. And when he tells me to do things, I do what he say. And as I walked down a riverbed to check out my LZ, a dried out river in the desert, the Lord had me look down and saw these two stones. And he said, pick them up. And then he said, put them together. Because this is the understanding of what being on the rock is. This is the understanding of Matthew 16. Upon this rock I shall build my church. Just like a twin system where one's up and one's down. When you flip one and then you put them together, they become one. That's what being on the rock is. That's what being made one in Christ looks like. That is the rock of understanding the entire scriptures. Ready? Y'all want to freak out? Y'all ready to freak out? All right, let's freak out. What's the name Ricardo mean? Ricardo means dominant ruler. Ricardo means hard king. Dominant ruler. Right here, the, it, during, during the days of those kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. How is he going to set up that kingdom? The rock that was cut from the mountain without hands. It will break in pieces the iron, the brass, the silver, the gold, and the great God hath made known to the king, which shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. The, I'm going to say it again. The rock that was hewn from the quarry without hands, that's Jesus, will crush all these other kingdoms. Okay, you ready? What's Ricardo, what's Ricardo mean? It means dominant ruler. It also means hard king. Let me remind you guys of something very quickly. Remember my my entire trip where the Lord God told me, now go get the shipping containers and take them to the ark, which I had no, I had nothing to do with the name of the ark or the ark beginning. That was all Jim uh, in Houston after he got saved and his wife got cured of, the Lord had me lay hands on his wife and she had stage four cancer. And she's out mowing lawns, weed eating. I saw her this weekend. She is glowing. Okay. Ready? Listen very carefully. I'm stuck in this really long line. This is a path that um, there's a boulder that fell on a guy. A giant rock fell down the cliff and killed somebody. So the whole highway is blocked. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna take another route, but it's pretty fascinating that a rock fell and crushed a guy. So I need to document what happened. I'm on Highway 50, Highway 50, 
And I was waiting in a line. They said the highway would be closed for a couple hours, but I was waiting in line, sitting on my tailgate. And there was a truck behind me and I heard the guy's radio and he, he told the driver, hey, yeah, you need to find another route. <clears throat> While they were working on a highway, the highway up ahead of us, a giant boulder broke loose and totally crushed a guy. So they're gonna have to keep the highway closed now for a lot longer, So because they're bringing in an investigative team and all that stuff. So imagine you're me, I'm in a search and rescue vehicle. And, and I'm sitting there just going like, this is so weird. And this cop pulls up and, and, I, and, I, and I look over at him, he pulls over to talk to me to, about my vehicle, my search and rescue vehicle. And I tell him, hey, I heard that this guy got crushed by a big rock. He goes, you got pretty good intel. And I said, yep. And, uh, and then he says, yeah, a big boulder fell off and completely crushed the guy and blocked the highway. So the highway's closed. So he told me you should find another alternative route. So I made a U-turn and I'm going back on Highway 50. Then in my spirit, I hear the Lord tell me to look up 50 in the concordance. It means to be ignorant is in one language. And then the other one is, uh, uh, my father is rescue. So imagine I made a U-turn. There's a guy up in front of me that got completely crushed by a boulder. Daniel, Dan, Daniel 12 says the last kingdom of the world. Daniel 2, not Daniel 12. Mari clay mixed with the iron, which is what I showed everybody. The stone that was hewn from the quarry without hand. That's actually, I saw. Okay, let me pause that for a sec. Okay, so that's me on my trip. And I'm documenting that a guy just got crushed with a boulder right in front of me on Highway 50. And I'm in a search and rescue vehicle with two containers representing the bride and the judgment seat. And because a cop stopped and talked to me and because we connected, he allowed me to get out of line, make a U-turn, go the other way. And then we were able to get the truck out and go the opposite direction and head towards the ark while all these other people remained in line stuck waiting on this. Ready? What's the name Ricardo mean? That's proof that I documented that I was in that line. That's, I just, that's from the trip. Watch. Let me show you what happened. Ricardo means dominant ruler. It also means hard king or hard ruler. And then let me show you the Gunnison Times. A man killed in Highway 50 construction. So here's proof. This uh, Someone gave this to me this weekend when I was in Houston at the Ark. I, I went there to do a little errand. A falling rock killed a construction worker in Little Blue Creek Canyon area of Highway 50 on Tuesday, prompting an emergency closure. Crews were able to reopen the work zone uh, to traffic on Tuesday evening. I was there at like 10 in the morning. Ricardo Batista, 69, of Florissant, was killed instantly when a large rock fell on him and crushed and killed him. Ricardo, dominant ruler, hard king. Florissant means to flourishing, like that which is flourishing. The other race has taken over the world. In the days of those kings, which is what's going on right now, the iron mixed with miry clay, which is the, the last race that's taking over, just like Lady Gaga said, I myself am part of the manifestation and the, and the acknowledgement that this has come to that point in Daniel 12 right now. The guy that got killed, his name means hard king. He was crushed in front of me. I, t I documented it back then when I was leaving Grand Junction. I was like, man, this is, this is insane. This is absolutely insane 
and I'm in a search and rescue vehicle and on Highway 50 and I make a U-turn because that's what we have to do. We got to make a U-turn and go back the other way. And it all 50 also means my father is rescue. Let me show it to you just in case, because this is almost too much to believe, folks. Watch. Strong's 50, one, to be ignorant, not to know. It means being willfully ignorant. That's one thing it means. And then the next thing, Strong's 50, it means is my father is rescue. And I'm in a search and rescue vehicle making a U-turn. And I am a living, physical representation, manifestation of the word manifesting. I told you. That's why I documented it. This weekend I went to Houston. The Lord sent me to Houston. He told me I need you to go to Houston. Just go there and help button things up. So I went there. He had me take a, a cash, a supply of doves. All these doves that I have cut out. The Lord had me take the ones I had left. And you know what he had me do with them? He had me open the shipping container that was the judgment seat. And there is an empty tomb in there. That's what the Lord told me to put in that container. It was an empty tomb. That was the first thing he told me. Y'all remember the little book that chose, said the tomb is empty? He had me take all these doves and, and grind them. You know, grind them like with wings and, you know, feathers. And then put them all over the wall coming out of the tomb. That's what I was doing this weekend. And helping build a deck. Do y'all understand? Do you understand that the guy's death was a manifestation of the word itself being fulfilled? Do you understand that? I'm an end time harbinger. I'm a prophet for the end of the world. And I'm sitting there in a line waiting to go, but the road is closed and the guy is crushed. I just showed you the article. That article was given to me this weekend. Some other very strange things happened this weekend as well. Omega, Omega, Omega. I'm trying to figure out how do I share with you just how profound what happened this weekend was when I went to Houston. And as I was driving to Houston, what happened and how it happened. It's just so impossible. Let me um, let me check my folder and see if I can give you a testimony so you guys can understand. It's just not even possible. Here we go. Let me let me pause this and continue. So I can guarantee you now, the name of the guy that got crushed was Ricardo Batista. His name means dominant king, hard king, and I told I, I I documented it in that ride. I documented it right then that the Lord was conveying to me this is Daniel two forty two two forty three manifesting. Hang on, let me let me just pop this back on for one sec. I said, Yep. And uh and then he says, Yeah, a big boulder fell off and completely crushed the guy and blocked the highway. So the highway's closed. So he told me you should find another alternative route. So I made a U-turn and I'm going back on Highway 50. Then in my spirit, I hear the Lord tell me to look up 50 in the concordance. It means to be ignorant as in one language. And then the other one is uh, uh, my father is rescue. So imagine I made a U-turn. There's a guy up in front of me that got completely crushed by a... Okay, now I'm going to pause it because I had no idea then the guy's name was Ricardo. Hard king, dominant ruler. So the dominant ruler of this world is going to be crushed now. The dominant ruler of this world, which is Satan and his race of beings, is going to be crushed now. The road is closed for all those that are willfully ignorant. If you didn't make a U-turn and get your inverted and go back, 
where where was I going to the ark? Then you'll be part of it. And the ark is metaphorical because if you've been converted and you've been inverted now and the two have become one, you're no longer an up and a down. You're no longer a light and a dark. You're two lights in one body. Then you're, you're good. You should be good to go. The Lord searches out the hearts and intentions of every heart. Okay. So when I went to Houston this week and I had took a couple of friends with me, you know, Corey and I and a couple of friends, Kat and Tim, we cruised to Houston. And I put on, I have a DVD screen that just pops down from the, the ceiling. I can plug my computer into it. I, whatever it's got an HDMI, it's got a USB and I can play a movie for anyone that's sitting in the back seat. So I just press play to give them something to do. And the matrix three came on. And it's now remember this, my first act of obedience after I got saved was driving to Houston. The Lord told me, put on all black, tell Lou to put on all black. This was in 2002. And the Lord told me, put on all black, tell Lou to put on all black, start driving towards New York right now. And so I told Lou, put on all black. She thought I was crazy. She was like, okay, you're not making any. I said, please just do it. Just trust me, please just humor me. And so she put on all black and then she was packing a bag. And I said, the Lord said, you don't need a bag. And she goes, okay, well then you can buy me clothes when we get there. She thought we're going to New York. I thought we were too. The Lord said, start driving towards New York. So as I started my drive towards New York, I got pulled over in Weimar, Texas. I got pulled over. A light was blinking yellow. The cop said, I ran a red light. I said, officer, it's blinking yellow. It was 12 AM. And the cop said, let me see your license. He said, you have a suspended license, which was not true. I said, I do not. He said, put your hands behind your back. He arrested me. He took me to jail in Columbus, Texas. Lou followed me in our car to Columbus, Texas. I was put in jail. They, uh, a large black man came up to me in the jail cell and he said, Jonathan, have you ever been to, this is it. It's soul food. It's in Houston. It's off Pierce elevated. You need to go there. And this, this was my first act of obedience after being saved. After I was released from jail, after the night I got saved and I was arrested and they tried to do a little mind stomp on me because they, they had seen I had woken up. I was fully awake in their system. So when I'm in that jail cell, this large black guy named Argentine the third, he just comes up to me and he says, Jonathan, have you ever been to This Is It? It's soul food. It's in Houston. It's all Pierce elevated. You need to go there. And I just was like, how weird. I was like, okay. And he goes, no, this is it. It's soul food. It's in Houston. It's all Pierce elevated. You need to go there. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, something's going on, man. The, some, the Lord is speaking through this guy to me. And I was like, what the heck is going on? This is so weird. So as soon as I got out of jail in the morning, by the way, I did not have a suspended license. I got out of jail in the morning. Lou was in the parking lot and I, and I jumped in the car and I go, I, we, we got to go to this place called, this is it. And Lou's going like, I thought we we're going to New York. And I said, just humor me. She's like, whatever, just whatever. And so we drive into Houston I find this is it, downtown Houston on Gray Street, off Pierce Elevated. That's where it was in those days. It's moved since then. I find it. I pull in. We walk into the door. This place is packed. We walk in through the door. All these people turn and look at us. We are the only white people. Everybody's black and it's packed. And we walk in the door and when we do, there's a guy up on a stage, a band. The name of the band was called For the Lord. As soon as we walked in the door, this guy just starts going, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God. And Lou just had, she melted down. She's like, eh, 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 eh. We're, we're wearing all black. Eh, eh, we're she short-circuited. She had a mental breakdown right then and there. She's like, ah! She had to go sit down. Some black lady came over and started like, are you okay, honey? And she was just like, because <laughs> she knew that I had told her, you have to wear all black. 
She couldn't process that I had been pulled over, gone to jail, some guy in a jail told me we had to go to This Is It. I followed those instructions. I went to This Is It. And when we walked in, the reason that we were wearing all black was made manifest because we were the only white people and everybody was black. And they were just, the guys just, hallelujah, praise God. Okay, well, ready? This weekend when I pulled into Houston where This Is It is, on, on my way to Beat City, The Matrix was playing on that DVD player. And as soon as, as soon as we were pulling to Houston, Agent Smith and Neo are having their final battle. And Agent Smith says, this is it. This is the end. And right then I'm like, and I'm driving, I'm not really, uh, but I'm like, you know, I'm glancing as he goes, this is it. This is the end. And he's like, well, what? And Neo goes, what are you afraid of? Right then. My DVD player that's played the entire way just perfectly switches. There's no more sound from the DVD. And it starts playing music. Let me show you. It starts playing music instead of the words from This Is It. I mean, from uh, The Matrix. Right when... Agent Smith says, this is it. It's the end. And, and he's like, Ugh. and then Neil goes, what are you afraid of? These are the three songs that started playing. First was Be All Right. And then Reason from um, Spoken and then Fires. And every single song that was played, let's see, Be All Right, Reason, and then Fires. Every time a song played, it was, I tried to reset the DVD and I would restart it to see, you know, try and finish the matrix. It would just zent and go right back to another song. And I would just document, go listen to all those songs. You will freak out. Now, when I got, when I got to the ark and I, I got there and helped finish the deck, there, there's a deck going out front, like in Grand Junction. I went to my hotel, which was in Houston. I, we we actually, I went and did put the doves on the wall first. Then I went and spent the night uh, with my friends in Houston. And then that morning, I walked into the Galleria Mall to go get a coffee. And I looked over the balcony. And when I looked over the balcony, the very first thing I saw, I'm going to show you right now. So nothing had nothing had really been presented to me or nothing was in my in my hemisphere up until I just leaned over the counter and I just looked. Now, you know, some of y'all may think like, so what, clack watch, see the Omega? But I heard the Lord tell me to document it. Now, don't forget, as soon as I pulled in, it went from this is it, this is the end, to the three songs I showed you. Then it's, Omega, which is the end. Okay, well, little did I know that the, the night before I, this picture, Corey had stayed at the Ark. That's where Corey was going to stay and hang out with some folks there. They were talking about Omega. There's a storm called the Omega. Let me show that to you real quick. Okay, so... You might remember on the way to on the way to Grand Junction when I was telling the Lord, wow, this is really it. This is really where you, you're gonna show up. On the crown where Jesus is blowing the shofar, it's Alpha and Omega right there. See it? Then I find out about the name of the guy, the Gunnison's time by a bizarre thing. Eric Eric showed me that Eric showed me that the Gunnison Times had come out. Now, I don't even know how we ended up seeing that. I have no idea. And the name of the guy was Ricardo, which means hard king, hard ruler. And then this. Right here. So, right after I saw the Omega thing and I documented, I went out, I went back to the Ark to start helping build the, that deck. And I said, it was really weird. The Lord had me look right at this Omega thing and I heard in my spirit, the end has come. Matrix, this is it. This is the end. 
the Neo, what are you afraid of? Then the, it switches to all these gospel songs like Don't Be Afraid. And then I go to the Ark and I'm like, yeah, this is what happened. I saw this Omega thing. It was kind of weird. And Dave the Wave goes, wow. And, and Corey goes, we were just talking about the historic heat dome. It's called the Omega. See it right here? An unprecedented threat of record-breaking temperatures in a heat wave. And they call it the Omega Storm. See it? Makes an Omega symbol. And that is right after I shared with them that the Lord had shown me Omega. And it was with a, with an advertisement with it with a wedding ring, an engagement ring and a wedding ring. And it was 112 degrees. It was 112 degrees in Portland. And you everybody knows what a crap hole Portland's become. One, one, two. Without God, godless, ungodly. The Omega thing came up, I think, three or four times on its own. Now, here's a part that I almost can't wrap my brain around. After all this kind of congeals and it all is made manifest, and I'm like, this is absolutely bonkers. Now I know the name of the guy that got crushed when I was on the road in Grand Junction. His name means hard king. So the hard king is crushed and the road is blocked. All those that are willfully ignorant, the search and rescue vehicle has gone the other way. So that doesn't sound like there's much time left, especially considering that the bride and the judgment seat have moved from Rainbow Avenue to the Ark. I mean, do you understand that everything I'm telling you is impossible? I mean, I don't know if you guys understand what I'm telling you isn't even possible. You know how old Ricardo was? Remember there's darkness from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. There was darkness over all the land from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Ricardo Batista, 69, was killed instantly when a large rock fell and crushed him. Probably just coincidence. <laughs> uh-huh. It's here, guys. Have y'all seen South Africa? Do y'all know what's going on? Y'all should go look. You won't find it on YouTube, by the way. South Africa has descended into absolute insanity, chaos. They're filming people that they're, they've set on fire. They're, they, they'll beat people to death and, and sit there and film it. Babies are being raped, saying, uh, and they're like, it, saying it cures AIDS. I'm, I'm not joking. The insanity and that, the, the sea will turn terrible before your very eyes. The sea of humanity is turning terrible. Right now it's happening. And I'm a harbinger. And the Lord gave me a very clear sign to show you. The road is closed. The hard king and the hard, hard ruler is going to be crushed now. His kingdom will be destroyed. And this is a manifestation of Daniel 2. And it is happening now. And the stone that was cut from the mountain without hands, he, the God of heaven, shall set up a kingdom, shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break into pieces and consume all these other kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. The stone that was cut from the mountain without hands, that's Jesus, and it break in pieces all these other kingdoms. Time's here, guys. It, the time is beginning. This is it. It's happening. Okay, I'm just trying to keep you guys in the loop. <laughs> it's just like, ugh. It's, it's so overwhelming from mine. There's more, guys. There's a lot more. Um, I just, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed with uh, these two realities. Like, I, I live in reality. The rest of the world, what the Lord shows me, just like he showed me on my birthday, ring the bell. He had me ring it at 226, Alethea. And he, he had me do that to show y'all this is my function. My function is to speak reality into this system. Truth, only truth. To speak the truth. I speak the truth. I do the truth. Maintain the truth. 
speaking reality into a person's life, making a record of what God deems as truth, reality, and fact. It means literally to truth. It includes spirit-led confrontation where it is vital to tell the truth so others can live in God's reality rather than personal illusion. That's why he had me ring a bell at 226 on my birthday on this little building that's a church because that's my function. I'm a manifestation of that. That's what I do. 100% no line. I speak the truth into this system that's a lie. The system itself is a lie. Based from Genesis 1. Let us create man in our illusion. It's an illusion. The whole thing's an illusion. It's really a bunch of insects from the pit. Using the host body system to trap angels into being destroyed so they can get their energy and open the pit and get out and make war against the Most High. That's it. And now he's giving me a signpost that says, Omega, Omega, this is it. The end has come. The, the two containers are where they're supposed to be. And I've seen some people leaving comments saying, well, we should all get together. That's up to the Lord. I don't make those decisions. I Grand Junction was not my decision. Those are decided on by the Lord. And anyone that suggests would suggest that in any way they should have that, you know, they should have that uh, authority or they should have that uh, choice uh, is is absolutely absurd. We don't make those choices. The Lord makes those choices. A man may devise his plan, but the Lord orders his steps. He orders my steps. Just like he ordered my steps to Grand Junction, which is plain and obvious to everybody now. Okay. Jesus is coming. I guarantee it. I can look you in the eye and tell you, I guarantee you, the king is coming to destroy all these other kingdoms now. It's about to happen. Keep the faith. Okay, now that I've got all that, it gets so heavy, guys. I just can't explain to you, like, from my point of view, I mean, like I said, you know, when you get to see it from the other side of the screen, not just receiving a video from me, and you're here in person, like, you know, Corey's gotten to experience a lot of this, it, uh, and people around me, when you see it happen live, it is mind-destroying. It will literally take your breath away. It'll make you go have to lay down for half a day just to try and mentally process. Like Lou walking into this is it. I mean, how do you process that? Your boyfriend told you to put all black on and you don't need to pack a black bag. After the whole this is it thing happened, the Lord told me that's what I brought you here to show you this is it. The name of the band was For the Lord. He wanted me to know I was an in-time harbinger and that's what I would be doing for him. This is it. That's why he told me I would have to name my ministry. This is it. Four, three, two, one. It's a countdown before the fire. Just like Noah before the flood, before the fire. I'm the before the fire guy. <laughs> so I know it's just like, <laughs> it's so insane. It's just, it's almost hard to, you know, wrap your brain around. But here's one thing I would suggest to everybody. Uh, the uh, the information that the Lord's given me that's in these folders, and l let me just show you the plethora of information in these folders. If you go to this, uh, you know, to this is the end, and I have, I mean, there's Gallery 1, there's all this, there's Brighton, there's BitChute, there's Odyssey, there's the other links, there's Special Projects 2 right here. When you click on this, look at this. When you click on Special Projects 2, Look at all this it brings up. I mean, these are all folders that are pure gold. And if you, I mean, if you want to spend your time looking at stuff that is just absolutely mind boggling and you see all these links that are in these folders and you go and you look at, at what's in these folders, it will change your perception of this false reality that you, everyone's been living in. The human host body is the greatest illusion there is. There's no greater illusion. That's why it says, let us create man in our illusion. That's not the Lord God. Okay. Let me show you another scripture. Y'all know Isaiah 7. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. 
shall be a sign unto you, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. You shall call his name Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel. Uh, that shows you that Jesus is with us as El, the Almighty God. So that way you know exactly who he is. Now, let me show you something the Lord showed me also to let me know, Jonathan, you have completed your mission because my mission was to make known to you who the, the one true God is. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Call his name Emmanuel. So Emmanuel is a conjunction of two words. It's a conjunction of Imanu and El. Okay, Imanu is this word right here, uh, 5973. It means with us is. Now let's go back. With us is. And then Hebrew word 410. Hebrew word 410 is. E-L, L, the Almighty God, the Almighty God. There it is. And it's from the root word, Ayil. It means strength, specifically a chief politically, the head of all the gods, a ram, a sheep. There it is. So the head of all the gods is a sheep, a ram, and his name is what? L, the Almighty God. So Jesus is with us, is L, the Almighty God. That's who Jesus is. That's who the Almighty God is. Genesis 1, when it says, and Elohim said, and God said, let us make man in our image. The word for God is Elohim. It is not El, the Almighty God. It's gods that are of the Supreme God. There are also gods can be called magistrates. Gods can be called angels, either one. And so Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Okay, now let me show you this. So the Lord wanted me to be able to Rest and know that I had done the job that I needed to do. Let me show you. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, thou hast come glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. Thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as to many as thou hast given him. Okay, everybody, pay attention now. And this is e life eternal. Ready? What does it say? And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom they must send. Say it again. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Say it again. And this is life eternal. So you want to know that you have eternal life? This is life eternal. Jesus just said it. I have manifested your name to them. That they may know thee, the only true God. Let me show you who he is. With us is El, the Almighty God. Jesus is Emmanuel. He is not Emmanuel Elohim. He is not Emmanuela. He is not Emmanuel anything other than El. Emmanuel. With us is El. My job was to manifest the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom he had sent. Mission accomplished. Why do you think he's crucified between two guys? It's a represent it's a representation of us. There's a good you and there's a bad you. The bad you has to get inverted so you got two goods. There's a light you and a dark you. You got to invert the dark you so your eyes are single and your whole body's full of light. Now the scriptures make total sense. You were lied to about Genesis 1. It is not the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Elohim said, let us create man in our image. It is a covenant between the Lord God. He allows Elohim to exist because the Lord God created Elohim. That's why Elohim is the darkness and the Lord God is the light. Elohim's the darkness. The Lord God's the light. That's why in Isaiah 45, it says, I create darkness and form the light. I'll prove it. Ready? Isaiah 45, pay attention. I am the Lord, there is none else. Look, I am the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah. See the 1-9? What happens when you turn a 1-9 upside down? 
it becomes a 6-1. Watch, I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no there is no God. There is no Elohim besides me. I girded thee, thou, though thou hast not known me. I form the light and I create darkness. Watch this. Pay attention to this word create. I'm going to highlight it, this rust color. I create darkness. Watch. Create. I'm going to make this rust colored as well so you recognize it. 1254, bara, say it, bara, I create, to cut down as a formative process, bara, you see it, I create darkness, and then I form, I'm going to make this a very unique bright blue color, I form the light, form, yacht, czar, see it, okay, ready, I'm going to make it this bright blue, Yatsar, I form the light, Yatsar, as a potter. Ready? Okay, so now watch. I form the light. I create darkness. Ready? Let's go to Genesis, Genesis 1. And Elohim, so Elohim created man in his own image. Bara, there's the darkness. Elohim created man in his own image. Okay, now watch this. Genesis 2. And the Lord God, and the Lord God formed, look, Yatzar. I create darkness and form the light, told you. So see, the man that's in the system in Genesis 2 is the formation of the light that will form us out of the darkness. Now go to Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Watch this. Freak out, guys. Get ready. Ready? Isaiah, Isaiah 29. This is where the Lord started my whole ministry with this. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as, ready, the potter's clay. Yachts are. So you would see as a potter, like forming the light. Yatsar, forming the light. Potter's clay is the same word, Yatsar. <laughs> Ow! We're going home. Pray that you're counted worthy to escape all these horrors that shall come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. Never just say, oh, I'm going no matter what. Don't do that. Always just pray that you're accounted worthy. The Lord's the one that decides who goes and if your heart's there. You don't have to work you just have to surrender i'm all yours whatever you need you're surrendered you've got the key of david and you know he's coming whoever has an ear let him hear okay sorry guys i just like <laughs> it's, just like, oh. it's so heavy man just the, the information is so overwhelming I mean, can you seriously believe a guy in front of me on Highway 50 got crushed? I documented it. When it happened, I said, that's weird. The Lord's telling me, like, this is like Daniel 2.43. And then this weekend, Gunnison Times comes out with an article about the guy that got crushed in front of me. And his name's Ricardo, which means hard king or dominant ruler. And hard king, dominant ruler gets crushed and he's 69. What are you kidding? That's insane. And... It happened, what was, flor florissant, and it means to, to flourish, because that race is flourishing now. That's what's taking over the whole world. That evil, demonic, terrible monster that's taken over the whole system from the inside. And now the Lord's going to crush it all. And so that's a physical manifestation of the word manifesting into this dimension. I get to be part of that. That's what I do. That's that's my function. I manifest these realities and these truths. And that's what he uses me for. So that's why he, you know, he empowers me. He allows me to lay hands on the sick, cast out demons, all those things. And that's why all the lunatic, oh, clerks of fools, prophet. It's like, no, 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 y'all are, y'all are bug food that's going to burn. That's it. That's all there is to it. They hated me, they'll hate you. If they call me the Prince of Demons, how much more will they my my followers? That's why there's so many lunatics on YouTube. Oh, cluck, oh, blasphemer. It's like, no, 
your toast. That's it. It's that simple. I come with knowledge and power. I don't come with opinions. I come with proof. Okay, so anyway, there we go, guys. The king's coming. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. All right, love you in Christ. Um, yeah, you know, the it's kind of weird now because it's kind of an, a little bit of an awkward place to be. Uh, you, I know the ends here, but, you know, I still am running the ministry. So, you know, now that they booted me off YouTube, it's, you know, things are a little bit different. I know the way the Lord did it. He showed me it's the end. But the ministry is still here. So if anyone is, I don't like people really to support the ministry if you're financially in any kind of struggle at all. If you're not and it's easy or maybe not, I don't, maybe that's not the right word. If you feel led to support the ministry, that's the only reason I would want you to. You understand? Because I know it's all coming to an end, but I still, I still help people. I still help support the ark. I still help people and do stuff. And I still have plenty of stuff of my own to deal with. So let me show you how you can do that. If you like, you can go to PayPal and you can PayPal to JK at Jonathan Cleck dot com so you can just go to paypal and say you know you can paypal jk at jonathan click dot com it'll it'll pull up a thing that recognizes that or you can p.o box us at j click p.o box sorry p.o box nine one two eight one s a T E X A S seven eight two O nine. Okay, so Jonathan Clegg, P.O. Box nine one two eight one San Antonio, Texas, seven eight two oh nine. And like I said, you know, it's kind of a weird, awkward position to be in. But, you know, I still am out there, you know, doing my thing and I still, you know, still have stuff to take care of financially and but even though I know it's the end, it's like I don't know just where we're at on the timeline. I know it's coming quickly. There's no doubt. So anyway, if you're led, if you're in prayerful and you're like, hey, Lord, do you want me to do this? Let the Lord guide you on that stuff, okay? But it's not like, oh, we're gonna, you know, we won't be here unless, you know, unless you guys support. It's not like that at all. It's just as you're led, okay? All right, it's not Jesse Duplantis. Oh, I've got to get a jet. <laughs> so crazy. It's all these mainstream people are such lunatics, man. It's so insane. All right, guys. Anyway, now here's the other thing. I don't know. I do not know. But if the Lord tells me I want you to open up the ark to anyone and everyone to come visit, like, you know, like the Grand Junction thing. I'll do it. I do whatever he tells me to do. As soon as I know he's communicated that message to me, as soon as I know, I come and I, I will tell you. And that may be a possibility. Maybe, I mean, he sent me this last weekend because the guys that were there at the ark, they just don't have the carpenter skill set that I have uh, to get the deck. And there were, they bought, they got some really bad lumber. I mean, in Texas, I don't know where you guys are, but the lumber here is insane. And some of the, they, they allowed the store employees to pick their lumber. And as a construction guy, you never let anyone pick your lumber. You pick it yourself so you can crown all your boards. You can make sure everything's straight. They had boards that were like lawyer spines. just, And so they didn't know how to take the crown out of the boards you know, when you're trying to build a deck and trying to level it, it was a, it was just crazy. So anyway, so the Lord sent me so I could help him get that done and kind of straighten out some things that were bubbling up that needed to be kind of straightened out. Anyway, all right. Peace and grace. I love you guys. The King's coming. Be excited. I love you in Christ. I, I just can't tell you how grateful I am that the Lord allowed me, uh, you know, honestly, to suffer for his kingdom, because it, it has not been easy. It has not. It's It's been a, just an emotional and tr train wreck, uh, just trying to deal with what I have to deal with. Y'all have no idea. You'd have to be on this side to see it. It's, it's beyond. I mean, without my faith in Christ, 
I'd be over in the corner sucking a thumb with a 45 in my mouth because it's just, it's too much. It's overload. But anyway, <clears throat> the king's coming. There's, you know, take it for what it's worth. Go look at the folders. The Vatican's a snake. Largest altar in the world is male and female reproductive systems. Do you know why the largest altar in the world is male and female reproductive systems? Do you know why? Because in Genesis 1, that's what Elohim created. Let us make man in our image, phantom, illusion, representative figure, especially, especially an idol. So Elohim created man, bara, see, bara, just like I create the darkness. Because the Lord God created Elohim. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Who's him? I know who him is. That's the opposition of the Lord God. Created he him. Look, male and female created he them. That's why inside of a snake, the mouth of a snake is male and female reproductive systems. That's why. There it is. All right. Anyone that hasn't seen that, you know what? Let me just show you the picture. Uh, well, you know, I know that everyone should have already seen this male and female reproductive system like a hundred times over. But just in case you haven't seen it, anyone's new here, we can go to, let's see, album four right here. And I can show it to you right here. Uh, there's so many pictures, it'll take a moment to populate. Okay, so there's the Vatican. It's a snake wearing a crown. There's the sidewalk. It's a split tongue coming out of the mouth of the snake. So that, that window that's right there, that's where the split tongue is, that window is this opening right here, which is above the sheep. There you go. Here's what, look, here these guys are facing opposite directions, see? Laying on their face, facing opposite directions. And they have their faces down, kind of like they can't see, mocking us. Here's a giant dead sheep. There's the eye, there's the eye, there's the teeth. There's the ear, there's the ear. Let's shrink it down. You can see the sheep. The window, that's the mouth of the snake. The mouth of the snake becomes the female reproduction system. The nose of the sheep, I'll take this. I'll take the male reproductive system and put it right here. That's the, the snoot of the sheep, like right here. So I'll take this male reproductive system and put it right here on the face of that sheep right here. Now I'll move it over here. There it is. So the male reproductive system is ejaculating a seed. And then if I turn this entire image upside down, those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. So we'll take sketch 84 and we'll invert it. There it is right here. So let's take that and invert it. We're going to invert that penis that's ejaculating the seed. And when it's inverted, it becomes this. That's the female reproductive system right there. Ovary, fallopian tube, ovary and fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, clitoris, opening to the vagina. And now I'll shrink it down and I will simply slide the altar right here, right on top of the female reproductive system. And if you don't see it, I'm sorry that you're blind. There you go. There it is. That is the female reproductive system. The Lord God showed it to me himself. He disclosed it to me because I'm an end time harbinger. I'm here to prove everything I've said. I don't just say it. I come with power. Let me show you the top of this. Let me show you the top of this. You see the seed coming out? That's a crown. They're crowning their kingdom. That's the opening to the penis. And then what looks like a bunch of honey melting is semen. And let me go back to Genesis 1 to prove everything I just showed you. That's a bunch of angels melting into semen. And it says, and the spirit of Elohim, gods of the serene God, moved upon the face as the part that turns because we turned away, as the part that turns of the waters semen right there so i just showed you an altar that is exactly genesis 2 the spirit of elohim god's angels and magistrates moved upon the face as the part that turns that was the turning away that was the turning away from the lord god as the part that turns of the semen that's why it's all made manifest in that giant idol pretty cool huh
<laughs> all right, guys. All glory to God, man. I just cannot believe that he would let me solve the riddle of everything. This is, this is a riddle of everything that's resolved. It's done. Daniel 2.43 is manifested. It manifested right in front of me on a road in Colorado while I was bringing the bride and the judgment seat to the ark. Right in front of me it manifested. Just showed you the Gunnison times. <laughs> All right. Peace and grace, guys. The king's coming. All right. I don't have my beer. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm going to pause it so I got to go grab my bear and give everybody a hug. Everybody needs a big bear hug right now. Hang on. Let me call Corey. Let me see. I'll call Corey. Mm -hmm. That way I don't have to risk the program malfunctioning. Hey, would you do me a huge favor? Would you go to my room and right there by the right, is my my bear i don't want to leave the program because if, if i leave the program sometimes it goes into this uh it'll stop and it'll malfunction so i, I want to do my group hug but i don't want to walk away from this thing cool back. there you go let's get the big group hug going we're about we're about to see dad how cool is this huh uh-oh Hang on one sec, guys. Okay. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Is that possible? Is this possible? It's not even possible. Not even possible. But you're looking at it. Trillions of rocks. And the Lord said, pick up those two rocks. Just to prove to me what the being on the rock was. That's our, that's our king. He makes the impossible happen every day. It's unbelievable. All right, hang on one sec. All right, Corey brought me you. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you in Christ. And the best I can do right now to, to give you an honest I love you is just a hug. Go grab your pillow. Go get a pillow. If you have a bear, a dog, whatever, someone sitting next to you, it's going to be okay. Go listen. Listen. Go listen to those three songs. Go listen to those three songs that I showed you that were that came on right when the Matrix. I mean, it was so crazy, you guys. The Matrix is playing and it's the very end and Agent Smith goes, this is it. This is the end. And I'm like, and then I'm thinking, wow, this is where this is it is right here in Houston, right? And I was like, this is it. This is the end. And then all of a sudden, Agent Smith is scared because that's what's going to happen to the enemy. Once the enemy realizes it's over for him, it's like, for us, it's the beginning. For him, it's the end. So I'm not afraid of the end because it's our beginning. For them, it's over. So, yeah, when I heard that and I heard, this is it, this is the end, then Agent Smith saw scared and Neil goes, what are you afraid of? And then right then, boom, right then, that second, that moment, I Shazammed it. I don't know if you guys have this app on your phone. It's called Shazam. See the, the right side up, upside down S right under the star? It's called Shazam. So if a song's playing, you just turn that on, you tap it. It hears a song and it tells you the name of the song. And so right here, it's showing me the what those songs were. It was Be All Right by Evan Kraft and Danny Gokey. So I'll show it to you. So Be All Right. Okay, so that's the first one. Then the second one is Reason by Unspoken. And then the last one was Fires. Now, again, they didn't play all in a row. The first one played, and then I, I tried to reset the DVD so they could finish watching The Matrix, and then I started again, and then boom, another song popped in. I'm like, what? That's crazy. So I shazammed it, and then, you know, then I was like, okay, let's try this one more time, and I and then I start listening. I listen to those songs, and I looked at the lyrics. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> anyway, 
supernatural happens around here all the time, guys, all the time. So, you know, this is kind of par for the course. Okay, one more time. This is you, Johnny. I love you in Christ. Thank you for letting me minister to you guys. It's been the greatest, best thing I could have ever hoped for. It has been a true ass whooper, just being honest. It's been tough. It has not been easy. It's been probably, it's just been tough, man. It's hard to tell you how tough it's been. Anyway, uh, I love you in Christ, and I, I pray for everyone. I pray everyone's accounted worthy to escape all the horrors that are coming on this earth and stand before the front of the man, Son of Man. And I pray, even though I know my identity, I don't take it for granted. I pray that I am accounted worthy. So that, that should be your heart, okay? All right, guys. All right, I'll let you know very soon, you know, if the Lord tells me, hey, you know, we're the ark is open for, you know, a get together, then I'll let you know for sure. And I'll let you know where, you know, the way the Lord will let, make it happen is he'll make sure there's an open time frame. So if people wanted to show up and, you know, just fellowship uh, before the final day, you know, and like I said, I'm not saying you need to be at the ark or anything. Wherever you're at is where the Lord wants you. That's the way it works. He doesn't miss. And being at the ark is not does not mean, oh, I'm at the ark, I get to go. That's not the way it works either. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the ark is just a place that Jim started, and it stands for Angel Refugee Center, which, again, is a manifestation of the truth because we are refugees from the system. You know what I mean? We are refugees from this serpent system that we got trapped in. Anyway, it's pretty fascinating. Okay, I love you guys. I'll, 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 I'll wrap this up. All right, God bless. Peace and grace.